Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to talk about semantic analysis. So what is semantic analysis? So semantic analysis is the process of finding the meaning from text. This analysis gives us the power to computers to understand and interpret sentences, paragraphs or the whole documents by analyzing their grammatical structure and identifying the relationship between individual words of the sentence in a particular context. Therefore, the goal of the semantic analysis is to draw the exact meaning or dictionary meaning from the text. The work of a semantic analyzer is to check the text for meaningfulness. There's also another topic which is lexical analysis. So what lexical analysis is and what it deals with. So we will also look for lexical analysis in the next video. But for shorter reference, lexical analysis deals with the meaning of the words. Then if lexical analysis deals with the meaning of words, then the question will come, how is semantic analysis different from lexical analysis? So lexical analysis is basically based on the smaller tokens, but on the contrary, semantic analysis focuses on larger chunks. Since semantic analysis focuses on larger chunks, therefore we can divide the semantic semantic analysis into following two parts that is studying the meaning of the sentence of individual word and studying the combination of individual words so in the studying the meaning of the individual word it is the first component of semantic analysis in which we study the meaning of individual words this component is known as lexical semantics and in the studying the combination of individual words so in this component we combine the individual words to provide a meaning in the sentences so as we discussed the most important task of semantic analysis is to find the proper meaning of the sentence for example Consider the following sentence. Ram is great. So in this sentence, the speaker is talking either about Lord Ram or about the person whose name is Ram. This is why the task to get the proper meaning of the sentence is important. We can do semantic analysis automatically works with the help of a machine learning algorithms by feeding semantically, semantically enhanced machine learning algorithms with sample of text data. We can train machines to make accurate prediction based on their past result. While we implement a semantic based approach for machine learning, there are various subtasks which involve including the word sense disambiguation and the relationship extraction. So let's discuss each of the about tasks one by one in detail. So let's start with word sense disambiguation. So as we have discussed that natural language is ambiguous and polysemic. Sometimes the same word can have different meanings depending on the its use in the sentence. Therefore in semantic analysis with machine learning computer use word sense disambiguation to determine which meaning is correct in the given context. For example consider the sentence consider the word orange. So if you have a word orange, the above word like can refer to a color, a fruit or even a city in Florida. So this was about the word sense disambiguation. Now next topic is relationship extraction. So in this task, we try to detect the semantic relationships present in a text. Usually relationships involve two or more entities such as name of people, places, company names, etc. These as entities are joined through a semantic category like works at, lives in, is the CEO of, at, headquartered at. For example, let's consider a phrase. Consider this phrase, Steve Jobs is the founder of Apple which is headquartered in California. So the above phrase contains two different relationships. First is Steve Jobs, founder of Apple. And second is Apple headquartered in California. So these are the, so these are the two relationships which you can draw from the above phrase. 
Now let's go on the elements of semantic analysis. So some important elements of semantic analysis are as follows. So basically there are three elements of semantic analysis. First is hyponymy. So it represents the relationship between a generic term and instances of that generic term. So here the generic term is known as the hypernym and its instances are called hypernonyms. For example, the word color is hypernym and the colors are and the colors blue, yellow, green, etc. are hyponyms. And the word color is hypernym. And the colors blue, yellow, green, etc. are hypononyms. Now next is homonomen. So it may be defined as the words having the same spelling or same form but have having different and unrelated meanings. For example, the word bat is a homon homonym word. Why? Because BAT bat can be implemented in two ways to hit a ball and bat is actually a non nocturnal flying mammal also. So it has two different implementations. That's why it is homonon. Homonomy. Sorry for the mispronunciation. And the next element is polysemy. So polysemy is a Greek word that means many signs. It is a word or phrase with a different but related sense. In other words, we can say that polysemy has same spelling but different and related meanings. For example, the word blank, the word bank, B-A-N-K is a polysemy word. So how it is a polysemy word? Because a bank is a financial institution the building in which such an institution is located and a synonym to for to rely on. Now you might be wondering then what's the difference between polysemy and homonymy. So both polysemy and homonymy, homonymy words have the same syntax or spellings but the main difference between them is that in polysemy the meanings of the words are related but in homonymy the meanings of the words are not related. For example, if we talk about the same word bank as discussed above, we can write the meaning as a financial institution or a river bank. In that case, it may become an example of homonomen as the meanings are unrelated to each other. And the last element is synonymy, so which represents the relationship between two lexical items of different forms but expressing the same or closer meaning. For example, author slash writer and another can be fate slash destiny. And one more element which we have is antonymy, which is spelled as A N T O N Y M Y. So it is the relationship between two lexical items having symmetry between their semantic components relative to an axis. The scope of the antonymy is follows application of property or not. For example, life slash death, certitude slash incretude. And which application for scalable property will be rich slash poor, hot slash cold, and application of a usage will be father slash son and moon slash sun, S U N sun. Now let's move on to the meaning representation. The semantic analysis creates a representation of the meaning of a sentence. But before a deep dive into the concept and approaches related to the meaning representation, first we have to understand the building blocks of the semantic system. So while representing the meaning of words, the following building blocks plays an important role. First is entities. So entities represent the individuals such as particular organization, location, people's name, etc. For example, Punjab, China, Chirag, Shitej, all are entities. And what is concepts? It represents the general category of individual such as person, city, etc. And what is relations? It represents the relationship between the entities and concepts. For example, Ram is a person. And one more thing we are having is predicates. So it represents the verb structures. For example, semantic roles and case grammar. Now we have a brief idea of meaning representation that shows how to put together the building blocks of semantic systems. In other words, it shows how to put together entities, concepts, relationships and predicates to describe a situation. It also enables reasoning about a semantic world. Now approaches to meaning representations. Now we'll see the approaches to meaning representation. So semantic analysis use the following approaches for the representation of the meaning. One is first order predicate logic, semantic nets, frames, 
conceptual dependency, rule-based architecture, case grammar, and conceptual graphs. These are the various approaches. Now you might be wondering, what is the need of meaning representations? The reason behind the need for re meaning representations are as follows. So the reason, first reason being is linking of linguistic elements to non-linguistic elements. So with the help of meaning representations, we can link linguistic elements to non-linguistic elements. Now second is representing variety at the lexical level. So with the help of meaning representation, we can represent unambiguously canonical forms at lexical level and it can be used for reasoning. The meaning representation can be used for reasoning for verifying what is correct in the world as well as the as well as to extract the knowledge with the help of semantic representation. And the last is lexical semantics, which is the first part of the semantic analysis in which we study the meaning of individual words. It involves words, subwords, affixes, compound words, and phrases also. All the words, subwords, etc., are collective known as lexical items. In simple words, we can say that lexical semantic represents the relationship between lexical items, the meaning of sentences, and the syntax of the sentence. The steps we have to follow while doing the lexical semantics are as follows. First, we have to classification of do the classification of lexical items, decomposition of the lexical items, differences, as well as the similarities between various lexical semantic structures are also analyzed. Now, what are the techniques of semantic analysis? So we can, any of the below two semantics analysis techniques depend on the type of information you would like to obtain from the given data. So the first is text class classification model, which assigns predefined categories to text. And another is text extractor, which pulls out particular information from the text. There are even various semantic classification models. One is topic classification. Based on the content, this model sorts the text into predefined categories. In a company customer service, teams may want to classify support tickets as they drop into their help desk. And based on the category, it will distribute the work. So with the help of semantic analysis, machine learning tools can recognize a ticket either as a payment issue or a shipping problem. Another one is sentiment analysis. So in sentiment analysis, our aim is to detect the emotion as positive, negative or neutral in a text to denote urgency. For example, tagging Twitter mentions by sentiment to get a sense of how customers feel about your product and can identify unhappy customers in real time. There is also intent classification. We can classify the text based on the new user requirement. You can use choose these types of models to tag sales emails as they are either interested or not interested to proactively reach out to those users who may want to try your product. And final topic is semantic extraction models. So there are also various semantic extraction models which you can use of. The first is keyword extraction. So one is keyword extraction. It is used to find relevant words and expression from a text. This technique is used to separately or can be used along with one of the above methods to gain more valuable insights. For example, you could analyze the keywords in a bunch of tweets that have been categorized as negative and detect which words or topics are mentioned most often. And another is entity extraction. The idea of entity extraction is to identify named entities in text such as name of people, company places, etc. So this might be useful for customer service team to auto automatically extract name of products, shipping numbers, emails, and any other relevant data from customer support tickets. So this was much about the semantic analysis. Don't worry, this was a theoretical topic. You will more able to learn about it in via the blogs also you can even read a lot of blogs regarding it which can give you a clear picture of it so yeah that was it thank you so much